have been struggling with what I want to say in this video. The events happening around the world since last week made me think about it even more. What does inclusiveness in the workplace mean? For some time now, companies have understood the importance and benefits of creating a work environment that is inclusive. For example, guidelines have been set up either through legislation or on a voluntary basis to make sure that the offices are embracing methods in providing access to the facilities to anyone, including the physically impaired. Do these guidelines really create a more inclusive workplace? Or is inclusiveness nothing more than the meaningless catchphrases already added to those worthless company mission statements? Looking at the physical office will tell you a lot what a company stands for. And true inclusiveness means that a company which sincerely embraces it understands that a diverse staff of various physical abilities, race, age and sex will create a workforce that is more creative, has a broader worldview better problem-solving skills and in turn will be more productive. Companies that consciously embrace inclusiveness gain high rating in great places to work ranking, which in turn leads to greater profitability. Inclusiveness has also been directly translated into the design of the workplace, allowing through activity-based working principles for a more versatile workplace in which the staff have a greater freedom of choice of where and how they want to work. Now, with COVID-19, what will be the effect on this idea of inclusiveness? The term social distancing suggests the removal of the social from the workplace, which, as I have shown in another video, is completely wrong. The very essence of the workplace is its social element, which the employees identify themselves with. But the term social distancing connotes an exclusiveness. Companies are now requesting assurances from their employees to show not only a willingness to return to work, but also to provide proof that they are not a liability to their colleagues. By having their temperatures checked, by wearing masks to clean their hands regularly and to disinfect their desks after use. If we continue down this path of distancing, we will end up with either the demise of the physical workplace or the office will be so strictly regulated with constraints that we, will end, that we all end up in individual cubicles again. Or worse, where employees are forced to wear trackable bracelets that make an audible beep when we come within a distance of two meters from each other. All the physical effort that has been done to create an inclusive and diverse workplace such as activity-based working methods and its emphasis on free address seating and the social interaction spaces seem to be counterintuitive to the solutions that are now required to fight the spread of COVID-19 today. We need to come up with creative ideas to provide a safe physical distance without forgetting the need to socially connect people within the office. Technology by itself will not provide the answer. I believe that the solution for this will be de-densification and decentralization, ideas which I will investigate in the next video.